No, so this is Hard for Games Guiden. This is our live podcast. For those of you that haven't watched before, this is Hard for Games Guiden, our, our side show, except it's live. And I'm going to use the joke I use every single time. Uh, you know, a lot of you guys, when you were watching Hard for Games Guiden, which was our side show, news, whatever, were like, why don't you do this live? You know, why don't you do it on Twitch? And well, was, now you get what you asked for. Now you get half of what you asked for, because I'm not going to Twitch, because <laughs> I have no audience there. No one cares about me on Twitch. I only have YouTube. I don't want to split my audience. Maybe one day I'll do it, but uh, today is Probably not that not. day. Yes. What do we say to the God of Death? Not today. Um, <laughs> that's Twitch. Uh, but no, uh, so basically, we're, we're doing it live. We're here. I'm Tony. I'm Richie. And this is Game Over Jesse. Now, Game Over Jesse, if you haven't watched his channel, I thought, well, first off, you should, but I thought that would be a great pairing for Hard for Games. I've actually collaborated with him multiple times on different podcasts and episodes and such, but he does a ton of not only gaming news in general, but a lot of Zelda-related gaming news. So it's a really nice pairing with Hard for Games because we focus a lot on beta content, mods, that kind of stuff, and he does as well, but he also keeps up with, like, everything zelda whereas we do not <laughs> <laughs> i'll um, try at least so um jesse tell us a little bit about your channel i know i kind of ranted and raved about it but in your own words yes uh you can find it youtube.com slash game over jesse uh, right now the focus is the podcast the hylians games cast uh where we there's a few different sections. We cover whatever the most important news or whatever we felt was the most important Nintendo-related news from that week. And then we move on to a topic of discussion, which is maybe us giving like a retro review on a game from the past. And then we go into the Zelda mailbag, which is where uh, similar to how you guys sort of end your podcast where fans just send in questions, you answer mm -hmm. them, and move on. Other than that, we try focusing on uh, Zelda-related news, like you mentioned. And we also like uh, doing a bit of research and giving as much information as we can find about old, canceled, or beta versions of games. Also mm -hmm. very similar to what you guys are doing. Yeah, so, um, so there is a link to his channel in the description, guys. So if you're watching right now, either, you know, whenever it's convenient or before you leave, definitely check it out. Give him a sub. Uh, click the old notification button because you know how broken YouTube is. But make <laughs> sure that you check out his channel because there's a lot of really good content, especially when I'm on it. <laughs> especially. When of I'm course. <laughs> I just dragged the whole thing down, honestly. Um, <laughs> but you actually have a really, a really cool team as well. How did you meet? How did you meet everybody on that team? Were they just like fans of the show, or sort of? Uh, so I have Daniel, Kayla, and Ilya. I first met Daniel. He was writing for Zelda Informer when I was oh, right, yeah. doing some stuff with them. I was making some videos for them, and Daniel was editing them as well. But Daniel was just doing it for the fun of things. So I was like, hey, if you kind of maybe want to get paid for editing, you can come on over to my channel uh -huh. and help me with some videos. And he came over. He was like, hey, do you want to do a podcast someday? We did. It went well. Uh, it continued. And then we met Kayla. Uh, she worked with Daniel at a Starbucks and she quit, went to another job. And she also happened to actually work part-time for Nintendo, going to different mm -hmm. events and demoing games and everything. And then we finally met Ilya by, we did a, uh, this is actually interesting. You were on the video as well. It was the Wind Waker mm -hmm. uh, beta content or cut content. Uh, I'm sure you remember the video, but we had a competition no where <laughs> we no, had I remember. Uh, some, <laughs> yeah, we, we had some fans send in some audio recordings mm -hmm. to see who wanted to be on the video and read the <clears> script. <throat> there was two people that won a girl, a guy, they both still sometimes do work for the channel, but Ilya started doing so much vocal work because she actually went to school to do uh, voice acting and on stage acting. So it was a kind of a perfect match. And she began recording in so many videos that we just kept inviting her on the podcast mm. as a fourth guest. And now she just is one. So yeah. Nice. So yeah. you should actually check out her channel because I know that you have a degree in voice, but it's more like music, you know? Right. But her voice is so good. Like, when I was on the podcast with her, I'm like, you have such <laughs> a good voice. Like, I was totally blown away. Like, not that I was expecting her to not have a good voice, but it was just, it was 
so good. So I started watching her channel. Um, geez, it's like the Nerd Apprentice or what is the name of her channel? Again? Uh, the Geek Apprentice. The Geek Apprentice. Sorry, the Geek Apprentice. And I periodically go over there and, and she talks about different theories and such. And she has the most soothing voice. <laughs> like she could put a screaming baby to sleep. Like she just like has the best best voice so. i i mean my voice can put people to sleep too that's but not exactly ways. that's not ways. exactly no, a positive she's, she's, in the she's entertainment like, industry she's a, she's no but she's like she's it's like the perfect calming like voice and like her um like cadence is like perfect when she i don't know how to describe it other than just watch go ahead and watch the geek apprentice because it's like it's an undervalued channel like she like it, i think it's still in the process of growing but it's like so cool like just i'll go and be like oh i just need some i need to calm down <laughs> <laughs> I'll listen to yeah, yeah. Uh, help me out <laughs> first topic in the news is the well the update for the switch we're going to call it the switch pro or the new switch or the switch plus or whatever but essentially news broke that nintendo despite them saying that they wouldn't uh, is updating the Nintendo Switch, which of course makes sense because that's just what you do. And they did that with the 3DS. There's the new 3DS. PlayStation did that with the PlayStation Pro. Back when Heart for Games got a Switch and we were talking about it, um, I was talking about it, I guess. I took the day off work and <laughs> did a video and I was like, okay, here are the things I think Nintendo will eventually do. I think they're going to come out with a new version eventually that'll have better battery and then better screen because it's only like 720 right now and slightly enhanced but nintendo's version of it is slightly enhanced which is really slightly enhanced <laughs> ram processor or gram one of the three or possibly all three just to keep it competitive as the next generation comes out just to make it powerful enough i like this concept get... of orgy ram yes yes just <laughs> yeah exactly um just uh ooh. Yeah, I like that. Um, <laughs> See, you got it. Yeah, I did. It took me a second. Um, just to make it competitive enough to still attract third-party titles, because they they, they want to be they have to downgrade their games to get on Switch. You know, go from sixty FPS to thirty, go from you know four K to like a like a nine twenty or something like that, um, depending on the game. But they need to get just enough power in there so when your PlayStation Five comes out, you know, they, it needs to be still marketable, competitive etc. So those were sort of my predictions, but they might not be right. <laughs> what, do, what do you think Nintendo will actually do? Richie, we'll start with you. As far as what they're actually going to do, I think it's inevitable that they make some sort of Switch Pro mm -hmm. because it was slightly less powered than most of the competing consoles Slight, on launch. Slightly wasn't a nice... <laughs> way to but it's, understatement it yeah. travels which the ps4 and the xbox yes. don't so i think that's a significant point and i did bring it on my vacation with me and it saved me from a terrible terrible experience in the airport we just got moved around on flights so often and i had my switch with me and like i actually enjoyed spending time in the airport oh okay good because you Go know on. i had my switch and it was <laughs> It, it really wasn't bad. I was still really fucking pissed, but... <laughs> <laughs> As one is. But yeah, I, I don't know exactly what they're going to do. They're going to... They're going to release a Switch Pro type of thing at some point in time. Yeah. It's going to have enhanced stats and everything like that. What I'd really like is just a little bit larger of a screen. Not, not crazy. Yeah. But like when I play Octopath Traveler in the handheld mode, some of the text is a little bit... Yeah. Mm. What do you... So, uh, Jesse, before we go over to you, I'm just throwing this out there, and you can comment on this too. I was also thinking that they, like, cause Nintendo, you never know what they're gonna do. Like, they're I mean, like, here, they come out with Labo or what? You know, it's like, what the hell's happening? You know? So, <laughs> oh, that was the Switch Pro. We're we're actually yeah. totally <laughs> wasting our time. Yeah. Here. So it's like, I, in the back of my head, I'm like, maybe they'll make the screen bigger, or maybe they'll make it smaller. <laughs> like, oh, or maybe no. they'll have both because it's like you almost like you almost they'll be like, wow, it's really working as a handheld. Let's really make it a handheld. You know? How about the Switch Patch? You've Switch got patch. the whole, you've got the whole yeah. like game right on your eye, like Perfect. the R zone, like the R zone. Well, so Jesse, remember, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So with making it smaller, if you remember, they already had the Game Boy Advance, which was already kind of a tiny screen, and then they yeah. released the Game Boy Macro, which was mm. literally teeny tiny. Yeah. Like I, 
whenever I've seen a few people playing it out in the real world, and <laughs> because I, I never thought anyone would play it outside of commercials or people that Nintendo just gave them to, because the screen was literally just so tiny. It was like a, a more of a gimmick than anything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't think anyone would actually want to buy them, but they did. So maybe <laughs> they were onto something with these teeny tiny Game Boy games. Yeah. The Nintendo uh, system, you can get past customs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but with with the Switch Pro, I, regardless of what it's going to be called, and I've seen a lot of people online saying, uh, like, no, Nintendo wouldn't release an upgraded version of the Switch. That's not what they do. They're not PlayStation. They're not Xbox. But if you remember, literally every single Nintendo handheld console has had some sort of upgrade. And mm-hmm. Almost every home console, aside from the Wii U, maybe the Wii U, they had like the white version and then the black version that had a larger hard drive. But I don't know if you could really call that an upgrade. But the Game Boy had the Game Boy Color. The Game Boy Advanced had the Game Boy Advanced SP. Hmm. The uh, Nintendo Uh DS had the DSi, DSi XL, DSi Lite whatever other versions they had. The 3DS had the 3DS, new 3DS. The original Famicom had uh, the disk system add-on. The Super Famicom had the Satellaview. Uh, that was sort of an upgrade. Uh, let you play games that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to. The Nintendo 64 had the disk drive. The GameCube had the Game Boy Advance player, the online uh add-on whatever it was called the Wii had the Wii mini whatever it was called yeah uh, it was more of a downgrade though because it took away online and stuff so for the people saying that nintendo would not release something like this if you go with the pattern that nintendo has set it's more than likely that it's just not if they release it but when they release it yeah and with making a larger screen i could see them doing something to where they just thin out the bezel so the screen's larger but the actual size of the unit itself Mm -hmm. is the same size that way you can still bring over all of your joy cons and stuff Mm. and yeah i think if they did upgrade it it would be more of a more of an upgrade than the 3ds was to the new 3ds but i don't know Mm. if it would actually be a huge upgrade like the ps4 to the ps4 pro was and uh with Nintendo, because you mentioned Nintendo said that they wouldn't be releasing a new version of the Switch, I always remember back to an interview with Miyamoto where he was asked uh, right after the 3DS released on whether or not Nintendo would release a 3DS XL because I think it was an IGN interview or something and they were smart like most people are and they were like, well, the Nintendo DS had all of these different versions. The 3DS is just the successor to the DS so when can we expect all of these different versions of the 3DS to release? And Miyamoto said something along the lines of, we at Nintendo think that the 3DS is perfect as it is, and we don't see us iterating on any future versions of it. Three months later, he walks out on stage and announces the 3DS XL. So yeah. I know that's you know NDAs, and you want to keep it a surprise for marketing and everything. So... I, I understand why he said that, but at the same time, you have to read between the lines whenever they say something. Yeah. Yeah. I, they, I mean, they released the 2DS, the 2DS, I think maybe XL it was a thing, and the 3DS XL, the 3DS Plus or whatever the hell it was. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I think the 3DS Plus would maybe might be along the lines of what they do with the Switch because it was like, well, everything still functions back and forth. You have a couple games you can't play on the original, but really just like <laughs> Xenoblade. And there's just much more processing power like yeah, much you know um yeah. maybe maybe they what kinda... they're actually going to do is they're going to release a switch phone ah oh, oh. nice oh maybe a couple uh questions here um obviously very you know being our audience unrelated to what we're talking about um says, uh, why do you guys always drink so much? And then there's people talking <laughs> about being so hard drains your vital fluids. So I think mm-hmm. alcohol is very You guys hydrating. answered your own question. This um, ship is actually pretty cool. I would sail on that ship. Yeah, that's my, my, my grandfather's uh, naval goblet of fire. So it's good stuff. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers the Switch Pro. I mean, I... I uh, 
I'm excited for it. I'm, gonna, I'm interested to see what they're going to do with it. But it's Nintendo, so literally anything could happen. They're going to be like, it's going to be the Switch, but there's going to be no internet. <laughs> and it's going to cost $50 more. And But, the, but there's this much more GRAM. You know what I mean? Like, it could be anything. Like, <laughs> if it allows me to play Breath of the Wild at a steady 30 frames, I'll be happy. Yeah, it's like, it's just, um, it, it's, they're insane. Well, there was a comment in there that was asking us mm -hmm. if Google Plus really shut down. Ah, well, they are shutting down. That brings us to our next topic. Richie, did you want to quarterback this one or you want me to? Uh, you know, I mean, I feel like this whole Google Plus thing, mm -hmm. there was a big security breach, right? Yes, and they didn't tell anyone about it because they, they claimed it didn't reach their threshold of necessity to tell people about it, and they fixed it, but they never told anyone. <laughs> but I just I just like that. Obviously, it's because the social network had never taken off in the first place that Correct. they decided to shut it down. Yeah. But I still just like to think of it as, you know, Google saw that Google Plus had a terrible, terrible... You know, we lost your data. No big deal. Whatever. Whoopsie doodle. But we'll we'll shut the we'll shut the network down. Whereas Facebook is just like, yeah, you know, everybody's got your data, and we don't really know how to police content. But let's just do censoring. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think Google's also like, all right. Well, we had this content breach, and um, yeah, this thing's been on life support. Like, let's just. This is a good excuse. Pull, pull the plug. So for those of you that don't know, like we mentioned, Google had a security breach. They didn't tell anyone. And yeah. So uh, I don't know if, who actually utilizes Google Plus here, but essentially I think it was like 2012 or something like that. They, oh, I thought you were saying the number of people who used it. Like there were 20, 12. No, no, no. They, I think it was the year 2012. I could be off on that by a year or two, give or take. <laughs> but basically they, they created a, a competitor to Facebook, but... Unlike competitor is a strong word, uh, a, pot a potential competitor to Facebook. So, for example, you have a competitor like Twitter, which does Facebook, but much differently. It has a different set of rules and right, which makes Twitter much more immediate than Facebook, you know, or you have Instagram, which was absorbed into Facebook. But originally it was doing the social media thing, but in a different way, it was all image based right image 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 of course you can have a lot of text but it's all about the image there's specific standards for what the images can be like they have to be a certain way they have to be a certain resolution but you can gussy them up however right so they were trying to do facebook without doing facebook google plus attempted to do facebook as facebook was doing it with slight variations so for example they allowed you to have levels of friendship like acquaint acquaintance family friend you know so you could like dictate like what level saw what which has been since somewhat integrated into facebook as... somewhat yeah but i when i saw that that google plus was going down the drain i said thank god <laughs> like if anyone ever wanted any sort of evidence of a lord above that is it because <laughs> google like when they created google plus they're like hey guess what we also own youtube so there was a period of time where they're like hey youtubers you need to register through Google Plus now. You have to re-register everything through Google Plus. Oh, by the way, we don't we don't use usernames. It has to be a first and last name. So we had to be Hard for Games Reviews as our last name was our last name. So it often appears reviews dash or comma hard for games. Why couldn't hard for be our first name and games be our <laughs> because last Because then it was name. this weird separation and then sometimes one of them wouldn't show up. I'm going to name my kids hard for. Hard, hard, hard for. Hard for. <laughs> so hard for walls. There was a, there Ooh, were, maybe, maybe not. There was a point. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> there was a point in time where uh, Google Plus was insisting we change our name before they would allow us to utilize hard for games reviews because i think at the point in time they're like that's not a name you know <laughs> so there was a I, I was looking for the old email i couldn't find it because i think it went up in a message where I, I told uh you and john and i'm like when you log in you're gonna get a pop-up that's google plus telling you you have to change the name or you can select do it later select do it later and we just avoided it for months <laughs> and months and months and months until they finally changed their policy and we were allowed to use our name like we they wanted us to change our freaking channel name and at, for a while all notifications were through google plus 
Like, you had to, like... It was so weird. Like, they were, like, shoving it down your throat so hard. It sucked. And then, as the years went by, I would still periodically get a notification from Google Plus about Hard for Games. <laughs> but it would be on my personal account and it would always be like a month and a half after the video was released <laughs> and it would be like every 10th video this would happen and i'm just like what the hell the google plus has contacted me about a video i did like way back you know so it's like it, it was just broken from be to, to begin with and unnecessary so th i'm sorry that's my rant i i, I need to give jesse a turn to talk here but go ahead sir i'll let you start the next one <laughs> but uh what are your thoughts on google plus's demise yeah, so I never had a real purpose for Google+. Plus. Whenever I'm talking to friends as it is now, there's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You can just text or call them, Discord, Skype. There's so many different things. Mm -hmm. Having Google+, Plus was just that one extra thing that I did not need. Yet yeah. I still had that one friend who would try to message me on it. <laughs> and uh, I completely understand what you guys are saying about the hard for games reviews because that's why that is exactly why my channel name is game over jesse <laughs> <laughs> game over jesse uh luckily they didn't try telling me that game over was not a real name uh, so i guess i kind of lucked out with that yeah. um Maybe i, I feel like game over yeah <laughs> yeah I, I do feel bad for the people who do use it religiously uh i don't know why they would choose to <laughs> torture themselves but i i do feel bad for them yeah uh just as with the people who only use twitter and never use facebook they would feel the same way like if twitter ended and then they had to convert to facebook uh, they'll, I they'll learn to imagine, hate facebook just like we do yes I, yeah. I imagine it's a similar situation to the people who do uh use Google Plus like that. I wonder how it's going to affect the Google or the YouTube channels that are uh, signed up through Google Plus. I mean, that's pretty much so, all of them, like <laughs> yeah. at least from that era. So, I mean, like we are, but they'll, they'll probably just disintegrate as in like disintegrate, not disintegrate, like deintegrate. I guess I should have said um, yeah. the, the, the connection. They're going to pull out. They're going to pull out. Like <laughs> this is integrated. Yeah. This is unintegrated. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I mean, understand it now that I've seen the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're taking a little break from our primary news topics, and we're going to talk about the best, worst comments you guys have given us, because we've gotten a lot of them lately. Especially because I make <laughs> jokes about drinking, because people seem to get so riped up. They're like, you 30... Oh, my 33-year-old man drinking a beer. <laughs> I'm turning I'm, 33 in like a week, so, so you I'm 32. are 32 I'm right 32. now. <laughs> Yeah, my, my comment that I left earlier on your yeah. Arwing video that just went up uh, that was funny. yesterday, yeah. I think. Yeah, it was uh, it was kind of a joke leaning towards that where yeah, people no, were exactly. all complaining. Yeah. So I was just like, how dare a mature man respectably drink a beer in his own yeah. home? Or <laughs> yeah, how, how dare a man who's past a decade past the drinking age in the U.S. drink one to two beers... <laughs> once a week with his friends how dare you know so uh those are kind of the comments we've been getting lately but jesse i've been talking a lot why don't you take some of your best worst comments oh okay and start uh, her off here okay so from memory what i have is on some of my zelda theory videos which zelda theories is kind of what my channel began on i still occasionally do them but literally everything you can think of for a theory has already been covered and you don't want to tread the mud uh so on one theory in particular uh involves the origins of fierce deity link and majora and majora's mask and Someone in the comments will always bring up, well, did you read, not read the manga? The manga explains this. And mm -hmm. the manga are not canon to the games. A lot of the stuff that happens in the manga will completely go against what the game tells you, uh, such as in Ocarina of Time, the manga for it tells you that as a child, when Link goes to Hyrule Castle Town for the first time, he enters the bazaar and he adopts a baby dragon, a baby dragon <laughs> that is 
Volvegia, or uh, wow. however you pronounce the and name. That he then has to the fight movie. as an adult? Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's uh, yeah. what happens in the manga. And we know you don't even hear about the dragon until you're an adult and you go to Goron City and they tell you, you know, Ganon's resurrected this dragon that was uh, defeated by the ancient hero or whatever. So I keep bringing up those quotes. And there's another thing where uh, when the manga first starts, Link goes to the Deku tree and he fights Queen Goma, which is the boss of the Deku tree outside of the tree. And there's even a conversation between Queen Goma and Link. And there's a bunch of these different things. And the manga leaves out like five of the dungeons from the game. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, I always bring up these examples about how the manga isn't canon, but then they still try to argue as if mm-hmm. you insulted their intelligence <laughs> and for it. And it's just like, no, don't like, it's okay to say like, Oh no, this is a stupid theory because of this reason, because yeah. in the end it's, it's all just make believe everyone comes up with their own ideas. There's on no high rules. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's, that's one of the big ones that I have that people always go to or that another one is, uh some people will say like super mario 64 2 was never a thing you made that up and i'm just like well if you watch the video there's interviews of miyamoto talking about it yeah so you know you can say that i made it up but are you going to say the person who created and worked (laughs) on it made it up right (laughs) Uh, it's like you know i i don't know it's just some kind of dumb comments that there it's are like if you watch the video, you'll see the answer. So, <laughs> those those are a couple of mine that I that I get all the time. Most it's like in literature class when the the kids want always ask like, "What happens at the end of the book?" Well, you're supposed to be reading it because it's assigned reading, so maybe just wait for it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, I guess another one uh, is whenever people claim. I got this a lot whenever I was doing news for Breath of the Wild. They would claim clickbait and like the video title would mm-hmm. be exactly what the interview with uh, <laughs> Fujibayashi or Al Numa would be talking about. And I would make the joke that I could have a video of a close up of a basketball and title the video basketball and people would still <laughs> comment clickbait. Yeah, um, obviously so. I want you to click my content. Otherwise I wouldn't make it yeah it, it, yeah that is the point uh, after all we are just all whores for attention especially yeah, but i'm i'm interested in your guys's ours ours are a little more aggressive uh <laughs> <laughs> those are good though, because you know everyone's had that where it's like hey uh you know someone's just who insists that they're right you know like they insist they're right but it's like well listen man like but I mean, he no. was he was talking a little bit about Ocarina of Time, and I feel like that leads into the oh, yeah. the first one we have here for us. Yeah, so um, this is actually a new one. Now, back in the day, as a child, I pronounced it, pronounced it Orcarina, like O-R, which isn't a thing. That's just the name I pronounced it as a kid. I made that up in my head, it's, and I just it's kind of always It's an Ocarina did. built out of rare ores yeah. rather than the traditional, you know, like wood and ceramic. But this comment confuses that explanation that I gave <laughs> years ago with something, a completely different pronunciation. So we pronounce it Ocarina, but he says, um, or she possibly, um, says, it's Ocarina of time, you fucking retard. I know you started saying Ocarina as a kid who can't read. <laughs> wow. So, so some people do say Ocarina. We say Ocarina because in, in the Midwest accent, O's are often A's, right? So we, we, we but I've also heard like official... Um, like advertisements and such saying Ocarina. And to be a little bit of a linguistics nerd, yeah. the the sound that comes out when you say Ocarina isn't ah, yeah. it's ah, yeah. it's an open O. Yeah. So it's very common in Italian. Yeah. It, I, I don't really know the historical origin of the word Ocarina, mm-hmm. but I like Ocarina. Yeah, I, I think I, it's fine. I, I did have a problem with Orcarina. That Orcarina that, was that ground my gears. That that you should have said something during the episode. But um, yeah. I, I, I mean, like I to respect in. my friend from time to time. <laughs> from time to time. Yeah. yeah. So there was there was that one. Um, one person said commented Macarena. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, another one here. It says uh, the booze is so incredibly cringy. I'm sorry. I drink all the time. It's not an alcohol thing. It's an it's and that is just embarrassing as shit thing. 
It's so distracting and nonsensical to me that I, j I think I'm just going to stop clicking your videos from now on. <laughs> I, I wanted to be drinking for that whole comment, so. Exactly. Oh. Now, we, I resurrected, I printed out a comment thread from me and this one guy from like a year ago. And this guy, like this is, this is a, um, a thesis on everything that's wrong with me. And I made sure to wear a graphic tee today because he specifically mentioned part of the problem with me is that my entire personality uh, sort of like rotates around wearing a graphic, a tight graphic tee. Um, so... Richie, why don't you let, let's do this as a dialogue even? Okay, so you you'll be you'll be I'll, I'll be techno pop tart. Okay. You can be hard for games. Okay. If you didn't take a patronizing tone throughout, this would have been a great video. And I don't even remember what video this was on, by the way. Oh no, actually it was a yes, it was a GameCube NPDP reader video. Um I said, what? That's just me being excited about finding a unit that I've been looking for. It's just how I sound. I didn't intend that at all. So the structuring and the inflection is not an attempt to talk down to the audience, but an anomaly caused by the excitement? I find that a bit hard to take, but if it's not how you usually speak, I'm willing to give another video a try before I make a final judgment on how I feel about this channel. Maybe it's just my voice, but why would I even want to talk down to the audience? It's counterintuitive. If anything, it's not intentional. Now prepare yourselves for this. I'm gonna I'm, sit back. I'm gonna I'm gonna need to take a breath here because this is where it gets long. This is just a real quick, if you don't mind. This is his comment back. <laughs> oh. It's a trend with some popular channels to try and talk to young persons under 18s, and some people either intentionally or subconsciously attempt to simplify things or else slow down their natural speech spacing, not pacing, spacing, mm -hmm. so as to keep from overwhelming young ears. It is, like you said, counterintuitive, but it's rather common, and with YouTube getting its panties in a twist, ooh, there's some wrongness there, about being family friendly, there is certainly incentive to try and make a channel more agreeable to children. This being said, I just watched two other videos, and though you spoke much more naturally and without the insulting tone in that second and in a third, you were mostly natural sounding, but had several moments that were a bit forced and cringy, though it was less patronizing and more stereotypical. It may be presumptuous of me to make my judgments based on thereabouts 20-ish minutes of video, but it feels like you are trying <laughs> to gain audience approval through copying tried methods of advertising. In Wait one video, it. you act like you are shilling to children and accompany it with higher tones, lots of wide-eyed looks at the camera and excessive amounts of gesturing and touching of the systems. In another, you are laid back and treating the situation like a react video with loud tones, inconsistent voice modulation, fake surprise noises, whoa! <laughs> and much less looking at the camera with the focus being on the game and your companion. Ooh, your companion. My companion. Probably you or whoever was on <laughs> And in a third, you took on a rather hipsterish air down to the blue ribbon beer trope coupled with excessive facial expressions and a bizarre oscillation between manic grins and jaded millennial sarcasm done in a lower register than the first video <laughs> and sitting near the bottom of the register in the second. I was groggier <laughs> during one video and I had more energy during another. <laughs> the three videos all have a distinct personality to them that does not match the other two and come off as rather false. You can't feel different ways about different things. Okay, I gotta keep on topic here. Honestly, I don't know how to feel about it at all. I don't inherently dislike the heavily descripted manufactured videos, but the lack of constancy is a bit jarring and the odds are against me with two types of videos I found rather off-putting and one type that I generally only tolerate when the subject is exceptionally well handled. You have really cool gear. Hey! <laughs> And I really want to see more about it, but I'm not sure I have the ability to pay attention to what is being shown when I am getting constant checks on the mental list of cliches. I wish you the best of luck, really do, and hope you find a style that suits you, but as someone who has to self-promote and make their work into a brand, on its own I can tell you that you really need to find some consistency in what you are putting out that goes deeper than tight-fitting graphic tees and a slight oblique angle. <laughs> well, that was something. And then there was yeah. another guy that commented, just a random person that said, um, there was absolutely nothing patronizing about this video. You sound like a douche, my friend. I don't know what your <laughs> motives are, but try, but try picking up a hobby instead of making an ass of yourself in the comment section of YouTube videos. Three thumbs up. But if you, if you do pick up a hobby, you might end up like us, which, mm, not that great. Yeah. So, you Oh know, yeah, I guess I probably still need the topics. Yeah, you do, you do. Um... He used enough long words in there that I felt yeah. like he was trying to make himself seem more educated by using longer words. Let's talk about 
the official Zelda, original Zelda, NES ROM hack that Nintendo released on the Switch. So essentially what it is, is if you were playing for the Nintendo Switch online service, you get a X number of, uh, you know, playable NES games. And they essentially created like a save state. And in some areas it's called Zelda SP, in some it's called Living the Life of Luxury, which is kind of neat. <laughs> and basically it just starts you off in the game uh, with all equipment, lots of money, and basically it nerfs the difficulty. You still have to explore, but basically it's just like you could pay for whatever you want. You know, you start off with everything. It's just sort of a different way to experience the game, I guess. Um, so, you know, it starts you off with 255 rupees, I believe, which the original Zelda, I don't know if you remember, but it's hard to get currency in that game. Like it's, you, like it's tough. Like everything's expensive. You rarely come across enough. Um, so questions I, you know, just wanted to, or topics I wanted to bring up regarding it is obviously everyone's thoughts, but you know, uh, what other games would it be exciting to have this sort of treatment like a ROM hack? And secondarily, uh, I've also read some articles. There was one uh, on the GQ magazine UK that was upset about basically Nintendo nerfing Zelda, even though no one really has to play Zelda this way. You know, they were upset about that. So I uh, wanted to get your opinions. Jesse, let's start with you. You're the resident Zelda expert. What, are you, what were your thoughts when you first heard about this? What other games could use this treatment? Overall thoughts begin. Okay, so one, my overall thoughts on this is I think it's a great idea for some of the younger gamers who are little kids or people who haven't, like they've heard horror stories of how hard it might be to get uh -huh. through the original two Legend of Zelda games, especially the second one for me, yeah. uh, which I, I hope they kind of do the same thing for it. Uh, which is another game they could do it for. Um, but yeah. starting you out with like a lot of rupees and stuff, even though you're getting all of the rupees, you can still do a few things to mess up your save file to where I know there's like moblins or bacoblins, whatever they are in this game, mm -hmm. where they'll be like, hey, you can buy this potion or you can buy this heart. And someone who doesn't know better may buy the potion and then yeah. lose their chance of leveling up all of their hearts. Uh, mm. But I, I just think it's great for the younger people. Uh, People complaining about it nerfing, it's not a permanent change to the actual game. It's a second game altogether. So I don't understand why they're complaining because they can still play the original. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that, that's just my thoughts. Um, the only games that I could really think of is some people seem to think Zelda 2 is a lot harder than the original Zelda. So maybe if they did this type of easy mode for it, the original Metroid or even Super Metroid, giving you all of the stuff from the very beginning would be the same thing for younger gamers who might get in and get a little bit confused. But I feel like getting lost and figuring out where to go and all of the backtracking in those games is what teaches you how to play it. So yeah. if you get somewhere and you're stuck, it tells you that you need to go back to another place. And hopefully you've gotten an item that'll let you access a different area in the room that you were in previously. But if you have all of the weapons at the very beginning, then when you get to that place where you would typically have to start backtracking, you can just go past it. So it takes the fun away. I don't necessarily know if it would be a good fit for that game, but that's really the only one that I could think of. Because other games like Punch-Out, there's no need for it because like, it's just you know learning patterns with... Uh, Mario Kart games, all the funds in the challenge of racing. The original Mario games, there's already certain glitches or tricks that you can do to get a bunch of one-ups. Mm -hmm. I Personally, I can't really think of anything unless they apply it to an RPG. Um, the only yeah. thing I could that I would like to see in an RPG-like game is if you played the HD or the PC version or the PlayStation 4 version of uh, like Final Fantasy VII, they have like a, it doesn't give you anything extra, but it speeds the game up to three times the usual speed. So you can just grind through the game without it taking hours. Hmm. Uh, I think something like that would be kind of an easy mode. Uh, but what do you guys think? I, I can't really think of anything. What do you think, Richie? For, for me, especially on like the Nintendo era, I feel like easy modes of this nature would be mm. kind of difficult to pull off because there were mm. only a few games that actually did like a lot of 
true save files. Mm. Like, if you want to get all the weapons in a Mega Man, you can just put in a password and you have all the weapons. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I don't know, because, like, I mean, I've never had a problem with cheating in games at all. Like, yeah. I, most of my early game, early experiences with, like, RPG games, mm. I, I cheated my way through most of those because I wanted to just play the story, and I've been only really getting into the RPG genre as, like, a game genre in mm. the past, like, five, ten years or okay. so. But, like, I, I kind of agree with what Jesse said about having the stuff in Zelda not really being the core challenge of Zelda. Yeah. Like, obviously, you kill enemies in fewer hits with a better sword and things mm. like that, so there's, there's, it definitely makes it easier. But I, I always thought that the hardest thing about Zelda was that there were so many little tricks to getting through the areas and actually finding areas and oh by the way mm. you have to make the map yourself yeah <laughs> when i originally played i mean not when i originally played but when i when i first beat the original zelda because i played it multiple times but never really got very far i was playing on the 3ds virtual console with like save states and that even with like the benefit of having like a save state my God, that game is hard. Like, I, I can't even deal with Zelda 2. Like, I don't have the patience for it. Like, I, I played it, but I just, I die so quickly, you know, that I'm just like, whatever. There are also a lot of better platformers on the NES. Yeah, e exactly. Enjoy, so, so, like, you know, I would I would be interested in seeing, you know, Zelda 2, I think, is a good candidate. I think mm -hmm. um, doing the reverse for easy games would be interesting. Like, making Kirby, like, a bullet hell <laughs> would be fun. Because Kirby's a beginner game. You know, mm -hmm. and that's literally what they made it for is to be a game for beginners. And what if you like amped the difficulty, like quadrupled the number of enemies on screen? Like, so you have to constantly react, sucking, blowing, sucking, blowing, <laughs> right? Not inappropriately, but like, you know, sure. you, you know what I mean, right? Like everywhere, like you, you have to like deal with like a lot of stuff at once versus the more casual pace of Kirby could definitely switch it up. So I think it's like Kirby's Adventure on uh, the one on the NES. That was like the late release that, you know, actually a bigger file size than mario world um and it's a great game but what if you know what if we could make those easy games more difficult yeah just to do the just reverse a little bit more sucking and blowing yeah just a little <laughs> bit more we could always use a little more just a little, just a little bit yeah, a little bit please no shoot kirby <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. I, I, I This isn't a sort of thing that I really mind or have, like, a super strong opinion about. But, you know, obviously let us know what you your, you know, thoughts are in the comment section. Um, and ultimately, like, something like this, I think I would love to see in more games. Just more yeah. customizability yeah. for the, the end user. Because, like I was saying a little bit earlier in the podcast, it's really hard to tune a game to such a wide audience. Because yeah. everybody is going to have different strengths, different weaknesses. And mm. part of the fun of a game is to sort of grow some of your weaknesses, enjoy some of your strengths. Yeah. But at the same time, there are some things that I'm never going to be an A-plus platformer player. Never, yeah. ever. I don't have the hands for it. So sometimes mm. a little bit of a a boost for my little, you know, little, little challenged hands. self, <laughs> it, it broadens the number of games that I can play. And, you know, I'm not... An expert type of guy. I like to sample yeah. a lot of the different possibilities out in the world. So, you know, I, I I think this is a plus, and especially things like this that don't break the game. You still have the original experience there when you're ready for it or you want it, yeah. you know? Yeah. What's what's bad about that? This isn't something I would necessarily play, but I'm like you said, I'm glad that it's there. It's There's nothing wrong with it. Like, if Nintendo wants to go through these games and modify them, and release them it's not like a george lucas scenario where it's like the special editions are the only editions you can watch you know it's not like that you could go back and watch the other you know play the originals and there's lots of venues where you can including the one where the new one's on you know so i just i one thing i would like to see is that nintendo has just been so nes focused with everything they've ever done like get like move on give us some crazy adjustments on the super nintendo like give us the freaking virtual boy like Give us, give us something we haven't seen in a while, you know? And also... That's what I want. The other thing, this this kind of brings me back to the days of rented video. Like oh. when you could go down to Blockbuster, Video Palace, 
mm -hmm. whatever sort of totally outdated local place. adult bookstore. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it was it was cool to rent a game and play somebody else's save file on that game. You yeah. know, see see how they approach the game. Mm-hmm get to piggyback off of all their work, you know, it was, it was fun. I haven't thought about that in a while. Kind of like flashback, because yeah, you'd, you'd always like play the game, have a save file, and you would hope that like when you when your parents would let you rent it next week, that A, it was there, <laughs> and B, that no one deleted your save file, but then- Or ruined it. Or ruined it, and occasionally you would get someone deleted it, occasionally you'd get someone ruined it, you know, and or occasionally you'd luck out and it'd still be there and you'd continue your progress because maybe it's an obscure RPG and only a couple people rented it and they had some respect and there were other save slots. You know, or, or maybe they would be like, all right, well, there's all three are taken. I'm going to delete the one with the least, least progress. Time, least progress, you know. So it's like, you know, let the winner be the winner. Let the loser be the loser. <laughs> you know, um, that kind of stuff, I think. Yeah, I haven't thought about that in a long time. Blast from the past, man. Oh, my goodness. That's um, what we do here at Harper Games. Blast from the we past. blast you with the past. That's right. So uh, next up, I wanted to talk about a very, very recent ROM hack. It is, it, for those of you that remember the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, which was like the Mario cartoon with the live action segment beforehand, they made a ROM hack of Mario 64 with that. So I was going to go ahead and play the uh, trailer here. Paisanos, it's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show! <laughs> Hey, Paisanos! It's a spaghetti dinner. <laughs> yeah, so basically, it says exactly what it is, and it gives gameplay. And they they chose on the cartoon what they're what they were mimicking. So, uh, you, as you can see here, these are meatballs. That's, that's really cool, actually. That last level, that yeah. This is fantastic. Yeah, I played it a little bit the other night. Uh, quick note, if you're going to play it uh, on, obviously you have to play it on an emulator, although I think it might be console compatible. Uh, I have to double check. Uh, make sure that it is in 8 megabyte mode, because that basically means that it requires the expansion pack. It will not play without that mode enabled. So I was invited. I mean, this is like... This is legit. Like, it's a... I've got to turn this down because it has actual Mario music and we're going to get flagged. <laughs> But I mean, you don't see all that many hack projects that like introduce new content like that. No. And I mean, it's it's still the same assets from like Mario sixty four, but yeah, those were totally different levels. And not all of them were the same assets too. They modified and created a lot of new stuff too. Never stop the screen share there. There we go. Yeah. So like, that's super an cool. awful lot of work to hack mario super show yeah. into yeah, the, the game one but... guy goes i didn't know i needed this <laughs> <laughs> neither did i but i do now yeah so why don't we we plug in here for a second and then um all right yeah we're, oh, yeah we're this is looking good rocking and rolling guys all right let's see here i'm gonna start a new game Boo. <laughs> Oh, they're really I'm excited they're just dropping this. you right into it. Some you can see the old school Mario jams. Yeah, so check out what's on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, excuse me, princess. princess. That reference I miss. I don't. <laughs> I don't know who's on the mirror there. <laughs> I think it was someone from the show. You get you get stuck in the. Uh... Oh, that's that's the house that they're in doing the dance at the beginning, right? Yeah. So this controller isn't the best. It's a little bit finicky. So my actual <laughs> movement's not going to be the best in this. Smart of you to blame it on the controller right from the get go. I'm gonna let you play it here in a minute. This is perfect. <laughs> Isn't this fantastic? This is really cool. This is the perfect for nostalgia for people who never needed it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whoopsie. 
There's a little bounce pad somewhere around here. So you have like the red coins and stuff and... Is that a new enemy they made? Yeah. Or, okay. Is it oh, still a go. copyright strike if I just hum the tunes? Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it is Captain Boo. That's amazing. So let's jump back in there. We'll do another one. Rich, you want to jump into this? Yeah, let me. There you go. Let me embarrass You'll see what myself. I mean? Like, it, it's just, it doesn't. Like, you hit the button and then you try to hit the same button again, it doesn't quite. Spaghetti dinner is what he says. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Gotta get more. This is amazing. <laughs> this Mario actually looks better in this game. So this part is hard because you have to do the, the successive jumps and this controller doesn't let you do it. You see what I mean? Like you press it again, but it doesn't really register. I need to get another PC N64 controller. Yeah, I think you do. <laughs> It works with Zelda, where you don't need Twitch movements like that. Yeah, just give up on this part. No! <laughs> <laughs> it's just gonna be all of you just trying to just get up a freaking wall. Okay, fine. At the very least, he could be sp saying spaghetti dinner the entire time I'm yeah, doing that. Yeah, spaghetti dinner. <laughs> I love the meatballs in the... Uh, they, are, they are pretty okay. great. They're a solid yeah. replacement for the coins. And the health has changed to pizza? Yeah. Now this is another issue where you can't do the bounce bounce because of the controller. Maybe I just need to play on your keyboard. There's a star up there though. But the lack of uh, the lack of uh, analog stick would probably be a problem. Yeah. There's a star up where? Up there. So if you go back into that area. Oh, maybe I can get up here. Maybe. I haven't tried. Or that. maybe there's just going to be terrible slowdown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, that's not the way I wanted to jump. <sighs> just do another backflip. Backflip, then a backflip. Maybe. You Come can on stuck on the wall a little bit here. <laughs> Uh, you having trouble? You yeah. Here, you give it a shot. Alright, so I think what you're trying to do is this. But then I don't think there's a ledge up there. It looked like there was, but there isn't. Alright, so... No sweat! No sweat, is what he says. So, <laughs> yeah, I guess the, I probably could have done it that way. The controller is kind of crappy, again. I spent like 20 minutes doing this yesterday. We're not going to spend 20 minutes doing this today. I thought you were going to say you spent $2 on the control. No. <laughs> See what I mean? Plus, it's like an ice level. So I mean, it's, it's, like... it's definitely not a great controller. But, no. you know, I like to take some accountability for my... No. See what I mean? Like, it just Jankiness. Kinda... There we go. Just what we needed. <laughs> I like how he spasms out. So let's go to... Um, this one really confused Maybe me. Maybe a level with some friction on it would be yeah. appreciated. The level in and out screen is perfect. It is pretty great. So I can't go into those. I already Dance went into white that. and we're out. You do do. King Mario of Cramalot. Yeah. So I actually used to work at a uh, used video game store that would have all of the Super Mario Bros. cartoon segments uh, on repeat. That's amazing. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yeah, a long, depending on what day you came in, the owner would have it on either Mario, uh, some crazy G4 TV shows uh, that came on like 15 years ago, uh. or uh, Rin and Stimpy. Nice. Oh my goodness. That's 
That's probably the A plus of the materials you mentioned. <laughs> There's just a star. There's seven. Right there. Yep, I need one more. Or you could just waste all of your energy and grab that star right over there. Yeah, but I'll let you do the easy one. Ouch. Now, where is that last one? This is great because you usually just see like versions of games that are slightly modded to add in stuff or yeah. take away things. You never see like entire levels. Right. Yeah, exactly. For. Oh man, we got Lou down there with the camera. <laughs> oh my god. I love how you can just walk up like, like 90 degree angle, walk up this. But no, despite like the most ridiculous concept, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm very surprised. Yeah. Just to prevent additional copyright strikes here, I'm just gonna make a quick adjustment to the audio plugin. You can't stop me, Tony. <laughs> oh, that's like totally off. Miyamoto's. I I think that was pretty close, actually, Tony. With the cease and desist. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to show Koji Kondo the, the respect and admiration he deserves. Yep. And... Oh man, I... You've given me a sense... false sense of options. So there's one just in that tree over there. And then there's that castle, which I kind of want to Yeah, I, I want to check out the castle. Yeah. Is it is it a functioning castle? Well, I don't know if they like there's plumbing and stuff. <laughs> I don't think many <laughs> castles had plumbing, Tony. Well, some sort of basic waste management, you'd hope. A pot that you can put your waste in and they can dump yeah. it outside. Is this a functional door? Let's see. False. No. Just, just a little image texture thing. Oh, this is just like the, the weird little oh, village. Oh, get, get away from me, Shy Guys. You need some meatballs. I wonder what? if you could blow those places up because there's all those bomb eyes. Okay, I need, Dude, to, you're gonna I need die. to get moving. <gasps> What did I just do? Pull that camera out a little bit. I bet you could climb on that. There is there like is some slowdown. Yeah, definitely. They they might have overstacked this area. Oh, I almost got that meatball. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty amazing. Honestly. Right. There we go, there's the speed back. Yeah, I should contact the creators. I mean, think about maybe doing like a review of this at some point, uh -huh. but it just, it came out so recently that uh, I didn't have time with all of our other projects. Oh dear, am I, am I dying? I don't know, move forward. Now, how do you usually find out about all of these? Um, a lot of people just tell me, like they're like, oh, have you heard about this? You know, and I'm like, oh, I have or I haven't, you know. Um, Okay, I guess I got a star. Got a star. <laughs> I, I knew there was a star in there. Yeah. Oh, damn, I got Excalibur. I am now your king. Save it. I think that's enough of this. Yeah, I, I, probably, think we, uh... I think we've shown what it's all about. Yep, exactly. Which is, I mean, that was pretty fucking cool. Yeah, that was Pardon really... Pardon my French. But... That was really neat. Let me go ahead and plug in my, mouse, my normal mouse. Wanted to give, uh, you know, obviously a big thank you to Game Over Jesse for joining us today. And I, I've been on many of his podcasts, like before we had done podcasts. So when we started this, I'm like, I got to get Game Over Jesse on because he's had me on so much of his stuff. Like he's like a very seasoned podcast veteran. Like we got to got him on board for this. I'll have to go back and check out some of the backlog so I can see you. Yes. Being so awkward on his podcast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been even yeah. more awkward if I had been on it. But. That's your MO, right? <laughs> No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, is, but uh, yeah, so I just wanted to thank him again. And also for everybody watching that are, you know, Hartford Games fans, that if you haven't seen it came over Jesse, um, in terms of the channel, obviously you see him now because his face is right there. <laughs> but there is a link to his channel in the description. So make sure that you click on that. Give him a subscribe, a like, watch a couple of videos. Um, a lot of his content has some nice crossover with Hartford Games in terms of uh, Zelda news, Nintendo news, lots of Zelda theories, a lot of stuff that we don't really get into a lot of 
you can fill in those gaps on his channel. Like, you know, the, you know, for example, like a theory, Zelda theory might be, you know, was Link really dead in Majora's Mask? Like that kind of stuff. Like people will think of these fan theories based on evidence from the games. And some of them are really far out there. Some of them are a little bit more realistic, but all of them he covers over on his channel. Um, so I know I kind of talked everybody's ear off regarding it, but uh, Jesse, did you want to say anything regarding your channel? Uh, yeah. So if you want to stay updated on my channel, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram is everything is slash game over Jesse uh, on the YouTube. We cover some similar stuff that you do. Uh, as I said earlier, hard for games was actually an inspiration for looking up and getting some of the information on canceled games and stuff. Uh, our most recent was uh to kind of celebrate the new Mega Man game that released recently we had a top five canceled Mega Man games uh doing research for that video I did not realize that there were like uh, over a hundred different Mega Man games wow. which was insane yeah um but yeah we and we they do came up with unique stuff. robot monsters for each of them masters <laughs> robot masters yeah. toilet mom or yeah <laughs> <laughs> toilet man uh Wash the dishes, man. <laughs> so the dishes, man. <laughs> I, there's just so many that you could think of, like chop man, fireman. Those are all, you know, easy I just think of like an out verb. But, but I mean, yeah, and, yeah. Verb and, and like, I mean, we're at the point now where there's like the the synonym robot masters. You know, there's hmm. been a fireman and a flame man. Yeah, they're they're just like <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> what yeah. can we do here? Don't forget about pyro man. Yeah. Oh. oh. Yeah. <laughs> Last week. Yeah. Ago. So. Uh, but yeah, other than that, we heavily focus on the, the podcast, but we try to have at least one scripted video come out every week. Uh, so I'm Brader Man. <laughs> yeah, Brader thank Man. You. Is that a suggestion from the comments? Bye, Brader Man. Yes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thank you for having me come on. Very grateful to finally be doing something on your channel. We had you on a few times on our channel. One of my favorites was one of the more recent ones. We found an old... Uh, a couple of old articles from like 1997, 96 about mm -hmm. Zelda 64 before it was released. Uh, and it was like marketing from Nintendo themselves, not other websites or whatever reporting on the game. It was just like an old cataloged page from Nintendo's website where the game was still planned to release in like 96 or 97 before it was delayed until 98. Mm -hmm. So that was really fun discussing what could have been. Uh, so yeah, and again, thank you guys for inviting me on. Yeah, yeah thanks absolutely. for coming. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on. Um, so let's uh, do a couple of announcements and talk about what we're going to be having upcoming on the channel. Shall we? I don't know anything. I, I'm <laughs> waiting to hear from you. We had a whole meeting earlier regarding what we're doing next. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But no, we did actually do that. I'm disappointed in you. I, I know, but no, no, I'm gonna what's, cover, but I what's just, the actual schedule? But I just I just wanted your permission to be able to talk about it, Richie. Denied. Oh. All right, this is the end. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for the super chats. They keep uh, the gears lubed up and turning. Otherwise, we can't do this. So um, thank you to that guy who said smoke weed every day and gave us two bucks. Um, no, but really. It was like the fourth time he had said it. Too. I know, I know. He's like, pay attention to me. Um <laughs> So yeah, but a couple of announcements, obviously, if you don't join us on Facebook or any social, sort of social, please do, because we always continue the conversation there. Do, do we maybe want to do a light spoiler for this one by turning the camera in that direction? Yeah, we should definitely do that. Uh, well, we will, we will. But yeah, join us on social media. Uh, we ha we're on all the normal ones, Twitter, Facebook, Google+. Um, you, you already kind of spoiled it with John's dump shot on facebook <laughs> oh yeah i know that's the yeah, app but maybe they're not on facebook so true story um and yeah and then we also have patreon obviously if you're a big supporter of the show we have our patreon supporters that uh, donate monthly we really really appreciate all of that because again um you know part of our ability to keep episodes coming is that we have uh cheddar we have well we we have equipment costs editing costs and it just uh it's tough, but you guys make it possible. We really appreciate it. Oh, hey, there's, there's another super chat. chat. And his comment, Thomas uh, Kilantano, Celentano, is $2. He says $2 and donated $2. Why are we hating on Fire Emblem Fates? Who's hating on Fire Emblem? 
Uh, maybe someone in the comments was hating on Fire Emblem. I don't know. But yeah, thank you so much for the super chat again. It really does help us kind of keep the lights on and um, avoid us from going bankrupt. So that's it's all good. You know, we appreciate it. Um, so a couple of things that we're going to be working on in the future. So um, Richie mentioned this one. We have going to do this without unplugging everything. Steel Battalion. So for those of you that are not familiar with Steel Battalion, it is that absolutely crazy, crazy, I'm hooked up here, uh, controller. Like, this is a full controller for a game. This is the official controller for Steel Battalion. And, I don't know if you can see it over here, uh, the foot pedals. There's also foot pedals right here. Wow. Yeah. So this is... this That's is pretty serious. It's for a mech game. Okay, so we're going to be covering Steel Battalion. This was uh, lent to us by a friend of ours that we met at the meet and greet that we did uh, a month or two ago and we're pretty excited but it's tough so we've been like training to do it <laughs> like every time we go to shoot we actually do like a half hour hour of training on steel battalion first so we don't completely <laughs> suck when we go to do the actual review like we do in most reviews like we do in most reviews yeah exactly so we have our, our steel battalion um we also have i hate to say it's not a review but it's how to get the best possible quality out of Shrek on Game Boy Advance video. And that is coming up wow. this upcoming weekend. So next Saturday, or not next Saturday, this upcoming Saturday, you are going to figure out how you can spend three to $500 to get the absolute best quality out of Shrek on Game Boy Advance video. The magnum opus of... <laughs> How to watch Shrek. You could watch it Blu-ray. You could watch it Blu-ray 4K. Or what you could do is play it on the Game Boy Advance player. Like hack it. Component out. Line double. Line triple. It's... I don't want to spoil it too much, but it's incredible. So, yeah, it's good. So, yeah, guys. Um, I think... I think that's it, Paisanos. I, I think that's it, Paisanos. Uh, Jesse, any any final thoughts? Any last words? If you uh... Will? Yeah, I'm I'm really excited to to see what Millen Speedruns is going to be bringing with the the finished mod that he's working on. Oh yeah, he mentioned earlier. Yeah, I'll be uh, keeping my eyes open for that this week for sure. Oh yeah, oh my god, I'm excited about that. Like that video, like the thing is, like it kind of fulfills a weird need, you know, because it's like you never really thought you wanted Ocarina of Time online or to be online, but then when it's an option, you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, of course. So then, like, that video, like, blew up. At least, like, a Hard for Games version of blowing up, <laughs> which is, like, other channels would be like, eh, you know. But for us, it's like, whoa, you know. Uh, Two views. Damn. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, like, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens with that. I'm also excited to cover up this ear because it looks huge on camera. You know, this big old ear. But uh, I've, been, I've been keeping my flappers out there for everybody yeah. i was told as a child if you go like this your ears will permanently be this way which is not true but that's what my mom told me i mean if you just never move your hands then it's absolutely yeah but, but she, true. she said don't like i used to go like this i used to play with my ears and she told me if i did that they would be stuck like that she would always do that my mom would always tell me that way about my nose too because i like to do that but that's, that's not one true. of my like it's not true gestures. at all. Yeah, I do that too, like right now. But yeah, no, my my nose has not been permanently damaged by that. So. Yeah. Yeah. Although you did do that a lot with your nipples. Those are permanently. Yeah, damaged, those are permanently though. damaged. Yeah, definitely. I definitely. I will never be able to breastfeed an infant. No. <laughs> no, which is I'm sorry. It's it's a bummer. Yeah, it's a real bummer. It's a real bummer. So hey, let us know your breastfeeding comments. <laughs> in the uh the chat below uh, and again just wanted to thank you all uh, i know we ran a little bit late here tonight but um maybe some of you actually got notified by youtube because we ran late but hey <laughs> thank you so much everybody for watching the show we really appreciate it. thank you again to game over jesse make sure to check out his channel link in the description below and we'll see you all next time remember podcast every other sunday so you'll be getting highlights next weekend weekend after that you're gonna be getting a new one take it easy guys so long paisanos Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and a share, and we will see you guys next time.